Twitter. Then he became popular leader. He continued to go further, and now he's Ghana's prime minister. Ghana, Ghana is the name. Ghana, we wish to proclaim. We will be jolly and merry and gay. The sixth of March, Independence Day. And I come on, we say Akwaba. Of course, in English, I will say welcome. This is Bambini to the world. And today we have one historian who is going to educate us about Mother Ghana. We are in the Ghana month, the month of March, where we birth Ghana. On the 6th of March, 1957. Girls, are you ready to meet the historian? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. What are some of your expectations? Um, I expect him to answer all my questions as he's a historian. Wow, I'm impressed. And you? I'm expecting to know more about history as he's also a historian. I see. What about you? What do you expect from our man? I am also expecting him to ask. I'm also expecting him to answer all my questions. To answer all your questions. So obviously, we are all here to inquire from our man. Guys, before we go to our man, we are going for a quick commercial break. After that, we will set the ball rolling. Stay glued. Are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fun to Cote d'Ivoire this Easter. Bambini so presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes. Stop nation. What be your price? Yesterday price, no be today price. Hey. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends, and family, let's all gather at Nel Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Grab your ticket for a cool tiny Ghana Cedis for single and 80 Ghana Cedis for a family of five and enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming and other free goodies. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023 at Nel Gardino, Opposite DBLA, Cooperidia at 9 a.m. sharp. Guest artist is multiple award winning group, Dope Nation. Okay, to the left, not to the right, now lean back. You know the vibes, Dope Nation. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are okay to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, Stop Nation. What be your price? You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, Stop Nation. Welcome back from that quick commercial break. Just like I promised you, we have a historian with us who is going to educate us more about the mother Ghana. There are a lot of questions we still want to find out answers. And so guys, follow me. Let's go to a one and know what is up. Q. It's a pleasure having you right here with us. And I believe you are also um, pleased to have us as well. I'm very happy to meet you. Yep. Okay. All right. So before we set the ball rolling up, everything, we just want to know more about you, or a little about you. So kindly give us some small introduction about yourself. Uh, you know my name already. <laughs> Yao Anoche from Pon. Okay. I'm a lawyer, and then a historian, wow. and somebody who is very much interested in sharing okay. ideas, especially with young people. Wow. I'm very much interested in narrating history mm -hmm. as a way of proving to the young ones coming mm -hmm. up that mm -hmm. it's not everybody who is corrupt. Mm -hmm. It's not everybody who takes bribes. It's not everybody who is not prepa prepared to die for the country. Mm -hmm. History tells us that we've got great men like uh, Yasantua, Konfanoche, Ose Tutu, Nano Foriata, Ekem Ferguson, Agri, Frikweku, Kwame Nkrumah, and others who sacrificed their lives so that today we will be where we are. And so if you hear that there is a politician who has taken bribe or a certain politician has deceived his people or a managing director 
somewhere who has defrauded a company. That young person hearing the history of Ghana would know that in the past we were not like that. And he has to look to those people and not the present. Wow. The wow. present, we, are, we haven't got much to learn from the present. And it's very unfortunate. And that means it is good for us to go to history. Wow. I'm so much impressed, and which means today we are going to learn a lot more. Stay glued, just like I promised you. In fact, we are setting the ball rolling as it stands now. I'm here with beautiful girls, and we are here to interrogate our man as he's going to tell us more about the history of Ghana. So, from you. Iramo Ohinawa. Princess Awakui. Erika Yaira Dodbevi. Erika. Since Erika, you are in possession of the mic. We are going to ask you first question. But before you ask the question, um, Sir will tell us the history about Ghana. So I believe when he's done, and then we'll ask whatever we didn't understand about what he said. So Sir, please tell us the history about Ghana. Okay, if you are to talk about Ghana, mm -hmm. I believe we'll have to start from the beginning. Exactly. And then the beginning is how or why do we have the name Ghana? Mm -hmm. You know, our name Ghana, we had it on 6th March 1957, okay. when Kwame Nkrumah at the old polo grounds. Mm -hmm. The old polo grounds is the area uh, immediately opposite the Supreme Court building, mm -hmm. where we have the Kwame Nkrumah Museum. That was where Nkrumah stood to declare Ghana's independence. Mm -hmm. And that was the area called Old Polo Grounds. And then on 6th March, he told the whole nation that at long last, uh, your country Ghana is free forever. Wow. That was the first time we were hearing Ghana. Before then, it was called Gold Coast. Okay. And that Ghana was not Nkrumah's own invention. Okay. There was a very ancient empire called Ghana. It was the first of the three empires of the uh, Saharan part of West Africa, which is today called Mali. And Mali. the empire of Ghana spread from Mali, present-day Burkina Faso, Senegal, up to Guinea. And we are told that that empire was made up of black people, majority of them being Akans. Mm -hmm. And they discovered that those people uh, used to bury their dead with a lot of gold. Wow. And then the women had earrings. They used to pour libation. Mm -hmm. And they belonged to the maternal inheritance as Akans have today. Okay. So it made us to believe that it was our ancestors who migrated from that place to the Gold Coast. And then later on joined by people like the Gars and the Ewes and then the present day, uh, what do you call it, the Gombes and others. So wow. we came from the ancient Ghana Empire. So Nkrumah felt that after independence, mm -hmm. the name Gold Coast, which was given to us by the white man, okay. had to change. And so we had to go back to the name that our own forefathers created. And mm -hmm. Ghana means the land of gold, the land of good black people. Okay. And the word uh, Ghana is in um, other the Latino languages like Spanish and Portuguese called Guinea. Okay. And so to if we come across the name Guinea mm -hmm. and Ghana, they mean the same thing. Wow. In fact, I didn't know about this. I didn't know we were twin to Guinea. Mm -hmm. And so meaning if I go to Guinea, I, I can mention the same name yeah. as Ghana. Anyway, Erica, your first question to say. Thank you, please. What was the first ethnic group to settle in the Gold Coast? The first ethnic group? Yeah. The first ethnic group to have settled here were called the Guans, the, the Guan people. Okay. And the Guan people, they are spread everywhere in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so I can mention some of them to you. Okay. We have the Etsy people in central region, mm -hmm. the uh, Winneba, the people of Winneba. Yeah. And then the Guan people, we have the Aquapim Guan people. Okay. And then when you go to the Volta region or the Oti region, mm -hmm. We have the Inchumuru people, the Inkonya people. They are okay. spread everywhere. Mm -hmm. These were the Guan people. They came first before the Akans followed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. So please, my question. So why was the ancient Ghana Empire formed? 
the reason why ancient Ghana Empire fell was that, you know, like a human being, when you begin, you have an end. Mm -hmm. The empire became so rich in gold that other people started hating us. And then the kingdom of Mali fought us mm -hmm. and defeated us. When they defeated us, the people became part of the Mali Empire. Wow. And they produced a very famous king on paper and in, in history. That famous king still is recorded as the greatest, sorry, the richest person ever to have been born into the world. Mm -hmm. His name was called Mansa Kankan Musa. Mansa Kankan. Kankan Musa. At first, the people of Ghana uh, were those who worshipped idols. Okay. But when Mansa Musa became the emperor, he became a Muslim and traveled to Mecca mm -hmm. and wanted to Islamize everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, the people of Ghana who had become part of the empire would not accept that for several reasons. In those days, the people of Ghana hated long beard. It was a taboo. Why? It, because the, largely the accounts Anytime they saw a man with a long beard, they associated him with uh, the Arabs. And it was not our culture. And then second, uh, the Arabs or the Muslims always wanted the men to be circumcised. In those days, our people hated that. To be circumcised means you could not inherit any stool. And then thirdly, they wanted us to throw away our religion and then to follow the Islamic religion. And we didn't believe that because we believed in pouring libation, libation to our ancestors and from the ancestor to the supreme being. Okay. And the, our, the, those people would not accept that. Mm. So we were forced to migrate. And when we were coming, they chased us with horses mm. until we got to the Techiman area, the Bono Techiman area, which was full of trees forest and the horses could not penetrate okay. so our people settled there peacefully that was why all i can say that we came from techiman uh -huh. you know, from ancient ghana that was the only place we could settle peacefully and nobody would chase us okay. and so all Akans at first were bono people every wow. akan initially were bono people mm -hmm. and after some time we started migrating from the bono area so those who would migrate because of war, a certainty would be called Asante. Those who would migrate because they had broken away from the Bono people, mm -hmm. we say a fat so half had broken away, they would be called Fante. Okay. And then those who would migrate because they were a senior of Adanse would be called Enzema. Those who would migrate because they were the, the technocrats of the Akans, and they started building houses. They were called the Adansi, Adansi Fuoko. They could build houses. Okay. And that was how all the Akans had them, like Achim people. Mm -hmm. they, they had their name from the leopard they, because they were famous warriors. And they were called Ochem. And today they are called Achim. Uh, okay. And then the Aquapim people, like Ekuo Apim Apim. You understand? Okay. And then the Aquamu people, they were also warriors and they were. Highwaymen, anytime the white people were going with the goods, they would waylay them, kill them, and take their goods. Aww. So they called them Akwemu people, Akwemu Kafu. Okay. But don't forget that originally we were settled at Techiman, Techiman. Bono Techiman. Okay. And we were called Bono. Bono in the Akan language means PSCA, firstborn. So at ah. first we were all called Bono people until Bono. the separation came. Okay. And then we had the people called Chifo. Chifo people, now they are a very small group in the central region. Okay. But all the Akan people now speaking Chi learned their language. Otherwise, we were speaking Bono. And Bono language is full of Bereko, Bereba, those things. And then the Chifo people removed the Bebebe from it. And the Ashantis and then the Akwamu people, Akwapim, uh, Kwawu, Achim, all learned that beautiful, so-called beautiful language. Mm -hmm. That is why we say they speak Chi. Okay. Because Ashantis don't have their own language. They speak Chi. Mm -hmm. Achims don't have their own language. They, they speak Chi. Aquapim speak Chi. Yeah. All because they speak Chi. Okay. All because we learn from the Chifu people. Wow. 
Wow, interesting. Wow, so it's a saying. It's a saying. Ah, uh, now you know why we speak chi. Okay, Erica, your question. Uncle, please, what was the capital of the old Ghana Empire? The old Ghana Empire, we had a, a town, a, a capital called Ganata, and then we also have our we have our ghost. Uh, these are two main uh, capitals, and then the major people there were called the Soninke people. Soninke. Soninke. And the Soninke people, as I told you, are still found in Guinea and then uh, Senegal. And they spoke a language, they still speak a language like the Guan language, very, very, very close to uh, the present language of uh, the Guans as we have today. Don't forget, President Mahama is a Guan. Okay. Do you know where he comes from? No. Bole. Bole. Do you know the language they speak over there? No. Oh, you don't know the language <laughs> they speak over there? Yeah, they are Guan people. Yes. Mm. Okay, nice. Princess, your question. Who are the big sis in Ghana's history? The big sis in Ghana's history. Kwame Nkrumah was one of the big sis. Okay. Somebody called Akwaje. We have Obechebi Lamte. Mm -hmm. We have of William Ofori Atta. Atta. We have uh, Justice Kufwado. And then we have uh, Dr. J.B. Dankwa. They were called the big sis. The reason why they had the name Big Six was that they belong to a political party called the United Gold Coast Convention. The United Gold Coast Convention was formed by a very famous Gold Coast millionaire called George Alfred Grant or Pa Grant. He had so much money, but he was an old man and he called his lawyer called uh, Pa Grant, uh, sorry, J.B. Dankwa, that I am an old man, very soon I will die. If you can go and form a political party, I will finance you, and then we'll have our own country, we drive away the white man, we have our own party. So the first leader or president of the UGCC was George Alfred Grant, otherwise known as Pa Grant. Grant. Now in 1948, something happened in Ghana. The UGCC itself was founded in 1946. And Kwame Nkrumah was invited almost the following year to come and help organize the UGCC so that we win independence. The one who suggested for Nkrumah to come here was called Mr. Akwaje, also a lawyer. Then, that was in 1947. The following year, Kwame Nkrumah saw that the speed at which the independence fight was taking place was just too slow and he wanted everybody to be That's on speed. board yes okay. so he and Akweje went to Jamestown area in Accra mm. and met the earth servicemen the earth servicemen were Ghanaian soldiers who had fought for the British in the second world war they had okay. come back after the war many of them were killed many had been disabled because of injuries oh. and they didn't pay them any money so Nkrumah and Akweje organized them and told them that if on one Friday, uh, uh, one day in February, 28th February, they will march to the uh, castle to present a petition, either the white people would agree or not, they believe that these ex-servicemen will help in the independence struggle. When these people weren't there, a man called Sergeant Emery, a white soldier, policeman, stopped them at the, uh, the Osu Crossroads. Okay. And they would not stop because they wanted to see the governor himself. Mm -hmm. He opened fire and killed Sergeant Ajete oh. and then uh, uh, Odate Lamte and Atipo. When he killed them, everybody on the Gold Coast got angry. So they started looting European shops, you know. And then two, three days later, they had to look for the leaders of the UGCC to arrest them oh. because they were the brain behind what had taken place. And the six leaders of the, out of the lot of the uh, UGCC people who were arrested became known as the Big Six because their name appeared in the newspapers 
big six arrested. So they were not the only leaders of the UGCs. In fact, I told you their main leader was Pagrant, but he was then in second D. But those in Accra that the white uh, policemen could get immediately to be arrested were the six people we have mentioned. Were they having a particular information um, for the, from the governor or the, were they having a secret that if the governor could allow them, they would have spread it out to other people? Yes, because they wanted independence. So they were going about campaigning. They were going about campaigning. So when people had attacked the Europeans and looted all their goods, you know, you will go about arresting them. When you arrest them, they will mention Kwame Nkrumah. He was the general secretary of the UGCC. So he was going about doing the mobilization work. So they mentioned Kwame Nkrumah and the leadership of the UGCC as those they were fighting for because they wanted their independence at all costs. So when it happened that way, the white people also got angry and rounded up the UGCC leadership. And eventually, that was what helped us to get our independence was wow. when they arrested them. Everybody in the country heard it, and they got angry, and they started rioting. Mm. And the rioting led to the setting up of a commission called the Western Commission. And that Western Commission's report was that the people of the Gold Coast wanted independence, so the white people should start going away. I believe you are also enjoying this conversation, and also you would be wanting to ask your questions and many more. Guys, before we continue, we'll be going for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fun to Cote d'Ivoire this Easter. Bambini Show presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes. Dope nation. What be your price? Yesterday price, no be today price. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends, and family, let's all gather at Neo Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Activities. Grab your ticket for a cool 20 Ghana cities for single and 80 Ghana cities for a family of five and enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming and other free goodies. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023 at Nel Gardino, Opsit DBL in Kuparidia at 9 a.m. sharp. Guest artist is multiple award winning group, Dope Nation. Okay, to the left, not to the right, now lean back. You know the vibes, Dope Nation. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are okay to the left, not to the right. Now lean back, you know the vibes, Dope Nation. What be your price? You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Not to the right, now lean back. You know the vibes, Dope Nation. Hello guys, welcome back from the quick commercial break. We are still here with Sir, the historian and a lawyer. So you could see that he has facts, figures, and he's talking from um, history, telling us more about what we didn't know. So if you just came on board, then you are sorry you missed a lot. But don't forget that we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel at Bambini TV. So you can go there, bring in your comments at the comment section, like, subscribe, and share. Okay, so we are grappling with what, uh, what Ghana is made of. Right here in the studios, I'm here with Irama, Princess, Erica, and also our historian. We are moving on to the next section. Irama, your next question. Can you please tell us something about Kwame Nkrumah? Kwame Nkrumah, for young people like you, I would say that he was also born as all of us. Mm. He was born on 21st September uh, 1909. At that time, it was a small village called Nkrofo in the western region, specifically an Enzima village. Now it is a big town. His mother was called Madame Elizabeth uh, Nyaneba. And we are told that he also started school at a local Catholic primary school at Hafasini, which is the district capital. 
he was a very good pupil. And uh, let me start by saying that even when he was a small boy, he was somebody that would become a great person. Now went to um, uh, 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 Achimota School, this very Achimota in Accra. He went there and he met somebody who influenced his life more than anybody in the world. Wow. And that person was one of his teachers called uh, George, uh, James Agri. I'm sure you've heard about James Kwejir Agri. Anytime he finished his lectures, Kwame Nkrumah would go and stand on the table because he was a very small person there and start teaching using the same voice and gestures as Agri and told everybody that he wanted to be like Agri. And don't forget, Agri's title was called Agri of Africa because at that time he was, a famous, he was the most famous African. And Nkrumah wanted to be like Agri. So it means that from a very tender age, Nkrumah was developing himself to become an African icon, an African wow. champion. And he also used to tell his classmates that he would want to learn until he had become the governor of Ghana in his uh, elderly life, not knowing he was actually making a prophecy about his own life. Then wow. after uh, uh, his studies as Achimota, he taught at Axim, also in the elementary school. And from there, he had scholarship and traveled to America. Everybody would go to uh, UK because at that time it was the English people who were ruling us. But because Agri was trained in America, Kwame Nkrumah also followed the full steps of Agri. And that helped him a lot because in America, he went to Lincoln University where there were only black people. And Nkrumah saw how black people were suffering. They were being molested and cheated by white people. And it made him so angry that Nkrumah hated every white man. And that continued throughout his life. Nkrumah never liked white people, only black people. Wow. Today we've learned something about our own Dr. Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah. Who founded Ghana? <laughs> that is a very big question. Today we have a holiday called Founders, Founders Day in Ghana. The truth is that we cannot have thousand people who founded Ghana. Mm -hmm. There was only one man who founded Ghana, and that is modern Ghana. And that one man was called Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. When he returned to Ghana, and I have said that in 1947, mm -hmm. he found that political party which had invited him called the UGCC, United Gold Coast Convention. Mm -hmm. Because the independence pace, the struggle was too slow, he left them and formed a new party called the Convention People's Party. party. Okay, it's, Erica, um, what else do you have to for say? It's like uh, the conversation is getting more exciting, but unfortunately our time is beating us. So, Erica, your last question. Okay. Um, I'm told that um, the UGCC was the first political party to be yes. formed in Ghana. Then later in Krumah, because their motto was self-government within the shortest possible time, and the CPP was self-government now. Um, so I'm asking that, was Nkrumah able to achieve um, his aim, like being able to govern, um, being able to, um, to gain our independence within um, now? Yeah. Yes, because as you have said, self-government within the shortest possible time. What about if that possibility does not happen? And Nkrumah says self-government now. And that compelled him to work so hard that we had our independence in 1957, which made us the first country, the first black country in Africa to get our independence. So it means that the motto he chose helped him. And as our daughter acts uh, who founded Ghana. Ghana. He founded Ghana because it was his convention people's party that won independence for Ghana. Wow. And so this much you see that on top there when he said at long last the battle has ended. ended. The people there did not include J.B. Dankwa and others. It was only he oh, and his yeah. ministers. Oh. Only the CPP people. Wow. So that was the foundation of Ghana since March 1957. Yeah, he and his ministers like Akwaje, uh, 
Ke Bedema, you understand, Kojo Botio Krobo, Edisa, they won independence for Ghana. Okay. Wow. This is very interesting. But unfortunately, we are ending here. And before we say goodbye, we are telling Sir what we have learned, and then we we'll say bye-bye. So, Erica, what have you learned in one sentence? Okay. I've learned that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was a determined man. I learned in the past, Ghana was very rich in gold, and this led to the coming of the Europeans. Wow. The conversation is very interesting, and because of that, we are continuing this same episode, God willing, next week. My name is Abna Ahrini. I'm here with a historian. See you same time next week. Let's say bye-bye to our viewers. Bye-bye.